What's up and welcome to Ahead of the Curve. This is your host, Jonathan Gellner, and thank you so much for joining us today. This episode of Ahead of the Curve is brought to you by New Era. New Era is the official headwear provider for the MLB, NFL, and NBA. If you love to rock New Era caps as much as I do, then don't miss out on this opportunity to wear what the players wear and get 15% off. Go to neweracap.com backslash AOTC and use the code AOTC, all lowercase, at checkout. That's 15% off your entire order using promo code AOTC. On today's show, we have on Brian Harrison, head baseball coach at Baldwin Wallace University. Brian enters his 13th season as the head baseball coach at Baldwin Wallace. The 2019 and 2023 Ohio Athletic Conference Coach of the Year has won 482 career games, including 341 at BW. Harrison has led the Yellow Jackets to the NCAA Division III National Tournament on six occasions, including the school's first ever trip to the College World Series in 2014 and consecutive appearances in the last few years in 2022 and 2023. So on the show, we spend some time on their fall development program, culture building, And we spent a ton of time on how to build hitters and offense. You're going to love this episode with Brian Harrison. Brian, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jonathan. Extremely excited about it. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm excited as well and excited to get to chat some offense with you today. I know that's a passion of yours. And, you know, I just, I've been a, a big fan of you from afar. And so I'm si- excited to get to control the questions today and get to give you, let you give us all of your secrets. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about your fall. You know, you guys, uh, you talked just a second ago, we were talking off the mic about your small groups. So tell us a little bit about how you use the fall for development. I know you guys win and I'm sure it starts now. Uh, so tell us how the fall looks looks for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for the kind words, you know, and I know we have so many mutual friends in common, so I've heard nothing but great things and oh, excited to talk to you here. So so thanks for having me on. But, you know, we, we do, we do small groups all day long. So we're going to hit, um, you know, groups of four and uh, I think we have 25 hitters. So we hit all day long and we do team practice at night. You know, the big thing for us in the fall, I'm a big believer that your swing is your approach. I, I do believe guys with a better swing have more success. Uh, we don't have elite athletes that can kind of rely on athleticism. So we're, we're, we really want to influence the swing, create an environment that kind of forces them to move and swing the way that we think is 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 at least you know best for us and, and for Division three athletes. And, and we're just going to kind of structure our practices you know, for that. So, so, you know, a big thing for us is, you know, we want to move, we want to move well. We want to move to the baseball well. We want to be, you know, in the zone. We want the barrel in the zone. Everybody talks about being on plane. We want to be in the zone for as long as we can, right? Because at the end of the day, your barrel doesn't care what your rear hip doing. You know, it, it, it you know, can we get it on plane and can we keep it in the zone? So we try to structure our practices to try, to try and, you know, improve those areas. I love that. And, you know, I I saw you on the uh, Baseball Coaches Insider. I was doing this and I know you guys did. uh, Maybe it was a Barnstormers event and you talked about a lot of the prep work that you guys are doing. And I think that's really cool to do with small groups. So, like, help us to dive into some of the different things that you do, you guys do before you even step into a cage. Yeah. So, so great question. So our prep work is really, um, you know, just kind of turn on the right muscle. So we're going to come in, we're going to do some pelvic tilts. I, I enjoy, I, I think pelvic tilts are important just because, you know, for us to move well, we have to have our pelvis underneath us. We have to have a little bit of, um, you know, awareness of what, what the pelvis is doing. Um, I think too many people get, you know, anterior pelvic tilted and they have a tight lower back. So we want to have a neutral spine, obviously with the lumbar spine being a prime reason we rotate. Right. So, so we're going to do pelvic tilts to help us just kind of move better. We're going to do uh, a single leg, you know, so a, so a half kneeling leg lift. And really what that does is it helps us stabilize, you know, so you got to turn on the rear glute in order to, to lift the, the front leg. So, so now I'm turning on my core, if that makes sense. And a lot of guys don't know how to stabilize just kind of the middle of their body. So we're going to do it right and left legs. Uh, we're going to do some other things that are going to help us counter rotate and rotate, you know, throwing medicine balls, 
Uh, one of the things we do is golf swings. So I'm, you know, I love doing golf swings to try and help guys feel the counter rotation. You know, we'll do a couple other exercises that kind of prime, you know, what we what we believe is like, you know, the slot position of the upper body. So, so those are kind of our prep drills. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll come in and we'll do some dry drills. We do we really do two dry drills. Um, you know, the dry drills we do uh, are, are, are is really the first one that just kind of preps. Uh, you know, the heel, the timing. You know, so I'm a big believer that the you, you, you rotate the front foot down. So the first one's going to be some kind of move where I'm going to rotate the front foot down. I'm going to turn the rear hip, but my hands are going to stay back, right? So the hands do, don't move forward, but the rear elbow is kind of slotting. So I know it's mm-hmm. difficult over radio here to kind of describe that, but we want to get into that position where it almost looks like Juan Soto taking a pitch, right? So, and I'm a big believer in kind of trying to slot that move and then and then we'll do some bottom hand stuff and some top hand stuff just to work on path um so that's kind of the dry stuff we do uh, and then we move into the cage and, and in the cage we try to we try to simulate something different every day most of most of our cage work is going to be top of the zone um i just like top of the zone i think it challenges your bat path it makes you kind of turn you've got to be able to rotate uh, i think at our level jonathan um you know, we, we, we have five, 10 guys and we're facing five, 10 guys. Mm-hmm. I think vertical batting, most guys at our level kind of pull the barrel into the zone, right? So they use hip ex- extension instead of hip rotation. Um, so, so if I'm, if I'm pulling the barrel into the zone, I think I, most guys struggle at the top of the zone. Plus if I push with my rear toe forward and get out, you know, and, and lose heel connection, Man, I'm I'm just going to struggle. So a lot of our a lot of our drills at the top of the zone are just going to kind of challenge path, and hopefully guys will kind of compete and get better through failure over time, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah. most you know we're almost exclusively uh, machine work uh, unless it's a game day, uh, but that's kind of the environment we create around the cage. Uh, you know we hit fungos. I'm, I, I love hitting fungos. I think. I think it just helps guys, you know, uh, get a little bit of rhythm. I think it helps guys, uh, you know, kind of rotate through the ball a little bit. Um, so, so, so if they hit, you know, and then when they come around, they'll just hit fungos into, you know, we have a netted backstop, so they hit fungos into the the net. We use the, we, you know, we use the drive line smash factor balls to help get a little bit more ride. We do, we do a lot of things like that, but that's kind of the foundation or the why be behind what we do. Sure. No, I like that a lot. And, you know, it's especially with you guys working in the small groups, I'm sure you can individualize as much of that as you want. We, we try to, you know, we try to. When we get a freshman, we get a, a young guy in, we're not going to make any kind of mechanical changes to him whatsoever. <clears throat> you know, we try to let the environment create the adaption, adaptations that we want, if that makes sense. Now, you know, if we have a second-year player uh, who, who who hasn't progressed at the, you know, at the level that we want, or, or, or you know, a second-semester freshman, you know, we'll dive in a little bit more individually as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, you know, let's let's talk about uh, just from you being a head coach and see, overseeing all of this different stuff. Like, give us a program-wide view of what you guys are doing this fall to really – because you guys could have a really good offense, but you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't win as many games as you have if it wasn't all encompassing, right? I mean, obviously, you, you, like you said earlier, well, I think you know we try, but you guys have been very, very successful in your time there. So, take take us through, like, from a program wide standpoint of what the fall looks like for you guys, and then how you guys are winning reps and and making players better. Yeah, that's a great question. Everybody has a different idea. Um, on how to improve their program. And, and, and I don't know if anybody's right or wrong, you know, but for us, you know, if, if we can play catch really well, right. If we can pick up the baseball defensively really well, if we can pitch it really well and we hit really well, we're going to be okay. So we spend a hundred percent of our time on that. So, you know, we don't do bunt defenses. We don't do cut some relays. We don't do any of that stuff to be quite honest with you. Um, 
Now, not saying in the springtime we won't spend a little bit of time on it, but I don't think that's where our – that's not our separator. That's not how we're going to win games. We're going to win games because our, our pitchers throw hard, they got good stuff, and they can throw strikes defensively. So so a, so, so a, a normal uh, position player, let's say an infielder's practice, he'll, he'll hit during the day in the small group. We'll have team practice at 3 o'clock. We'll have a half an hour of, t- uh, of individual defense, right, where we do – I'm a big believer in what Kai Correa does. I mean, the guy is 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 incredible. Um, he's kind of changed the game a little bit. We do a lot of Kai stuff, you know, hand drills, drills, uh, and that type of thing. Uh, and then, so we'll do a half an hour uh, of individual defense, and then we inter squad every day. So, like, we don't we don't spend time on other things. I just don't think mm-hmm. that's where we're going to win games. Sure. No, I'm with you. If you can play catch well, it takes a, a care of a lot of team defensive situations. And and it's amazing. It's amazing how much you can do just in catch play. It's amazing how many different things you can work on. And uh, um, you know, we went through that a couple of years ago, and our fielding percentage went through the roof. But we just started playing. It's not just about fielding percentage. We started making plays, and and just become a better baseball team. I love it. So with that, so let's go through, you know, we're getting into uh, November pretty soon, which is absolutely crazy. So does does that uh, time period, like the one that you just described, when does that end? And then when do you guys start the next one? It, it ended a week ago. We just ended, you know, yesterday we got done with fall break. So the kids are back on campus and we're going to, we transition, right? Uh, so the hitters are going to do, we're still going to hit uh, as much on the field as we can, as much as the weather permits. We're still going to do the same drills. Uh, we don't deviate from what we do, uh, but we will add, we'll back down a little bit, the number of swings and we're going to add, we add in a bat speed program. Uh, and then, of course, we're lifting we're lifting weights four days a week. So, okay. so we want to do the Batsby program three days a week, lift four days a week, hit probably four days a week. I love that. And then just the weighted bats, overload, underload. We do, we do, we do. You know, we do uh, dominant hand, non dominant hand. We do two knee stuff. We do. Uh, you know, we've done Batsby. I've done Batsby for a long time. Heck, I did it as a player. Paul Nyman, I did the set pro program back in 1997. I was probably one of Paul's first customers. Um, I think I think there's some good bats. We, you know, just trial and error and been doing it for, you know, almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we've kind of found our niche a little bit. I think bat speed can. When you, when you chase bat speed and you chase exit velocity the wrong way, I think it can lead to issues. Sure. Um, and 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 uh, so we try to do it, you know, in our Batsby program, in almost a uh, in a way, you know, like we'll swing on both knees. Um, we'll do kind of a Happy Gilmore swing, to where you know it's it, it's it's kind of the same swing, but it's not the same swing. We're just trying to gain as much rotational speed as we can. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense to you. No, I'm with you. And then, so let's talk a little bit about uh, just the culture, like the culture of your program. And I know that it's it, it's a buzzword right now. It's just something that a lot of people can describe or when they feel it, but it's really hard of like their process of developing it, right? So I, I'd love to hear just your process of, you know, you get guys in and out every single year, like you're, you're consistently moving around. And, you know, how have you been able to, number one, start the culture and, and continue that? throughout your time there. So you're, you know, you've been there, you know, 13 years. So how, like, what was it like whenever you first started? What were some of your big pillars that you were like, okay, if we just get this ball rolling, then I think that we can get to where we want to go. And then how have you continued to, uh, to really just grow it over your time period there? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy uh, to think about yeah, 13 years. And I remember those, those first couple of years and, trying to beat a round peg in a square hole, you know, and, and, and really, you know, my, my mindset's changed over the years. Back then I was, you know, I don't know, we had rules and, you know, we try to do it through discipline and all that stuff. And over the years, it's really, it's really kind of cultivated into something awesome. And and the reality is, is you win with people. I mean, I, I don't know, you can, we 
culture is a buzzword. And I don't know how many meetings we've had in our department about a culture. And, and to be quite honest with you, the teams that talk about like with their team about culture the most are usually teams that have a bad culture. You know what I mean? Culture is kind of like the way we think, feel, and do as a group, right? You can't really describe it, but it's there. And to me, it, you win with people, right? So it starts with, you know, me having good relationships with our guys, you know, authentic, trusting relationships, right? So if it starts there and then, and then our assistant coaches are, are so huge to that, right? So the, to be quite honest with you, the teams that we've had that have been the best, I've had great coaches uh, with us, you know, and uh, guys that are like relationship driven guys, you know, they're just, they get along. They get, first of all, me, me and them get along. Second of all, which, so when the head, when the coaches and when all the coaches get along, usually everybody gets along, right? When you don't get along with, when the assistant coach doesn't get along with the head coach, you usually have clicks, if that makes sense. So, Right. If we have like, I've, I've, we've had great assistant coaches that cared, you know, genuinely about our guys. They just care deeply about them, and then, and then, you know, from there, everything just kind of cascades from there. If that makes sense, right? We give our guys a lot of ownership. Their opinion matters. You know, we're the type of staff you play with us. You don't play for us, um, and it just creates an environment. We're all in it together. Yeah, we want common language, right? Common language is, 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 is huge, right? We need to have clarity of what we want, you know, and we have a lot of teams with all these hashtags and signage, and it means nothing, you know, without relationships, in my opinion. So, sure. yep. um, you know, so, so everything just kind of comes back to having great relationships and creating a great environment where their growth is accelerated because they enjoy they enjoy being here. They enjoy coming to practice the field every day, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then when that happens, it's, you know, everything takes care of itself, you know, a lot, so many issues just go away because of the environment we create. If, and it's not that I create, it's we create our players because they take ownership, they care, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's a fun group to be around. I love that. So with that, you know, I, I know team building can be, like you said, uh, if you say you do team building activities, it's usually for teams that are like, you know, they're, they're trying to create the culture that you want. Right. Uh, but there, are there any fun events that you guys do together or anything that you're like, okay, this is what we do here. And it's been just, it, it may, you may have been intentional or it may have been not intentional, but just some different things that are unique to you guys that may or may not happen other places, whether that's, you know, community service events, or you guys go do this, or within the team, you guys do X, Y, and Z. I would love to hear that. You know, yeah, we do. It's a great <clears throat> you kind of hit it on the head. We don't do anything intentional team building, but we do do community service projects. I think a week, it was actually two weeks ago, uh, there was an event in Cleveland called Head for the Cure, right? So we have a former player and assistant coach that unfortunately passed away to a brain tumor. And, and he, you know, I was really, close with them and uh anyways um so every year you know the boys we go down to uh to the event it's always right on a lake so it's freezing cold and uh you know it's just something that you would think would be kind of a uh you know just not a fun day man our, guy, our guys love doing it they're up they're up there at 5 30 in the morning and they enjoy like, it's like one of the cooler things we do, right? Like, you're just sitting there clapping runners on. We set up, tear down, all that stuff. But, like, you know, our guys are cheering runners on. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it just creates, like, you know, people are coming over, dancing with our guys at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's great. It's like a fun – it's just like a fun day. So I, I've never really thought about it until you just asked that question. But, that's cool. you know, it was one of those moments last – or two weeks ago where I was – no, that's really cool. I love hearing that. And, and, you know, anytime, I think the biggest culture builder is time, right? Time spent together. And I think that, you know, that that's, that's an awesome way to do it, uh, especially because you're giving back to the community. I think that that's really important for us. Uh, but let's get into, okay, so you guys get to Christmas break or, you know, winter break, and then you guys come back from January. 
you got to hit it, hit it running because you guys are having games here pretty quickly. How do you get your guys prepared? We can talk about just total program, and then I'd love to dig into the de- details uh, about your offense and how you get those guys prepared. Yeah. So, um, indoor, ba- you know, Northeast Ohio, you know, indoor baseball. It's 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 uh, it's crazy how how it goes. But you know, the big big thing about getting our guys prepared is it, it comes down to the guys on the mound. We got to get pitch counts up. We got to get them comfortable facing hitters, right? So hopefully, all of our work in the fall has been done as far as velo development. Post fall, we'll try and do some pitch design stuff. Um, you know, we, we, we obviously want to um, keep them healthy, but but we're just trying to ramp up what we do. We don't do anything special, so it's just a little bit more, a little bit more of the same, right? So, so just concentration on individual defensive positions on on now, you know, just getting the at bats up. We want to face. We want to get sixty five to eighty at bats before our first game if we can. It's a lot of at bats, so our pitchers are throwing a lot of innings. So um, that's kind of that's kind of the thought process right there is just get them ready to compete the first weekend. Um, obviously, it's you know it's not a destination. You know we're trying to get better throughout the entire year, but the reality is is we're playing for you know an at large bid right from the get go. So our first game February seventeenth means the same exact as it does on May fifth. We need to win that game and be prepared to win. I love that. So how do you how do you get your guys offensively prepared? Because you know you you're transitioning into uh, the preseason. So how do you get guys from going from like that individual focus to you know really focusing on the team, but also focusing on hitting against your live pitcher? And maybe you do that earlier than I'm thinking of as well. But just kind no. of that process. No, I don't think we do. I think that's a good question, right? Because we have to separate like movement work from 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 hitting, right? Because hitters hit so. Um, now with that said, I do believe the best swings are the guys that have the best opportunity, best chance to hit, Oh yeah. but we have to separate movement from hitting. So like, so our drill work, so while we're doing stuff, uh, you know, off the machines, all fall, all winter. Okay. Um, when we go, when we go into our, our preseason, if we will, we do do one reality. I'm a believer in one reality. So I want to give, I want to get a hundred reps a week on one reality if we can. Cool. Uh, and then uh, to try to supplement. Um, and then the other thing we do is we have we have the black box pitching machine. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's the it's sports the plate, call it the home plate machine. The home plate, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. it is it is it, nasty. We have two of them. Um, you know, I, I think our guys call it Dark Vader. In yeah, in uh, sure. the, the, it, it's the humbler. I mean, you you want to feel bad about yourself? Jump in on that, baby. And uh, so, so our hitting during the day. So let's say we have like a fifty-minute hitting block for a guy. The first maybe fifteen minutes or twenty. Let's say five minutes of prep and dry drills. Fifteen minutes of like, you know, maybe an angle machine or just some kind of pitching machine. And then we're going to do twenty-five minutes of Dark Vader and Darth Vader, and uh, they're going to get so. And we're going to throw sequences, right? So, so they don't know what's coming, um, and uh, and then hopefully, you know, um, and then he supplement with the win reality, and then we have live at bats later on that day. You know, hopefully our guys are ready to go day one. For sure, you know, I got a I've got a story about the the home plate machine. So, there's a AAA guy uh, a couple of years ago that we were hitting and. Uh, he comes in and like day, like one of the first days in this one, like there's no check for spin rate. I mean, it's, it just kind of, you set it up on the back and then and maybe you've got the advanced machine. I don't know, but it is what it is. It's like, it may be 5,000 fastball spin rate for all I know. And we set it up at like, you know, 92, we're just going to hit fastballs. And then, um, and then we get into like, so you could set it up like mixed sequences and within like four pitches, he broke two bats, and we we're like, okay, maybe this, <laughs> maybe this is a lot harder than we think it is. But it's yeah, it's it's tough, man. If you could find one of those, uh, if you're listening, those are really good machines, especially for oh, random. It's an, it's, a, it's incredible. It makes you know, it makes hitting off of a pitcher a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, we we don't we cap that thing, man. I think we I think we cap it like eighty miles an hour oh, yeah. because it's just. Yeah. 
at 85, our guys are like, you know, they're ready to try a different sport, you know? <laughs> I get it. I get it for sure. That's funny. Uh, so with, with that, you know, let, let's talk about um, how do you, how do you help with, cause this, this is, I think it's interesting. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, like, you, you know, your generation and into mine, we were very much in tune with approaches because, you know, I, I never got to even see my swing on video. Like I had pictures. Right. And so I, like, I didn't know much about the swing. Right. And so, but we were like how people coached us was approach. And now it, I feel like it is, it is veered the other way where a lot of kids know and they get to see their swing so often that I feel like the approach is, is the missing piece for a lot of amateur kids and so we talk a lot about, you know, what to do in different situations and how to game plan against certain pitchers. I would love to hear your advice on what you guys are doing, you know, just preparing for, you, you, I don't know what you guys call it, your, your conference or your districts or, or um, however you guys do it with, your, with the teams that you're competing against for your titles. Uh, but how do you guys go about doing that in, in, in an effective manner? Yeah, so, so I probably have a different thought process than a lot of people and, and – uh... So, so again, um, you know, I, I believe like your swing is your approach. I, I, I think that like uh, everything boils down to trying to groove my middle, middle line drive swing, right? So, sure. so we, do, do I have an approach, you know, different situations? The reality is, is I'm hunting the heart of the plate. So if I'm ready to hit what we, you know, a meatball, a middle, middle meatball, and I, and I just go from there. Right. Like, you know, so, so people, people are like, well, what's your two strike approach? Right. And there's just different ideas with that. But the reality is, is if I'm a good mover, if I, if, if I, as a right-handed hitter, if I turn left quickly, I need a two strike approach because my swing stinks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just doesn't allow for good, clean, middle, middle movement. Right. So, if I if I can if I can stay through the baseball, I don't need a two strike approach. I just trust my eyes, if that makes sense. Now bat speed's a big part of that, right? His launch quickness is kind of a part of that as well. But if you know if I'm slow and long and I got to start early, then I got to pick sides of the plate. But for for us at our level, Division Three, I don't think we need to pick sides of the plate. I don't think. I don't think uh, I just don't think we need to do that. So, you know, our approach is simply like we're trying to hit ground rule doubles to center field, right? And then, and then, you know, if I can do that now, in our in our good bat path allows for high pull side and low op opposite field, you know, uh, ball flight, right? My my ball flight is my coach. So we talk a lot about that. So going back to what we do in the fall and the winter is ball flight's my coach, right? We want to be able to control the baseball where we hit it. I'm not swinging. I just, I'm not swinging at the ball and then it just goes wherever it goes. No different than a golfer wants to have a fade. He knows exactly what kind of swing shape he needs to create a fade. So mm -hmm. he doesn't practice, you know, a, a draw, he practices a fade. So now my my practice swings are extremely important to my approach because that is my, my swing is my approach, if that makes sense. So yep. we just talk a lot about having middle approach and, and and if I if if I train all year long, go middle, you know, gap to gap, high pull side low oppo, in a mm -hmm. game I just see it and hit it if I'm if I'm thinking middle. And the reality is, in my my opinion, like I'm not going to swing at pitches I can't do that with. So, so again, some people talk about yes, yes, no, or whatever. I don't. While I do think it's yes, yes, no, I I don't know if great they, people just shut down and they don't know why they shut down. And it's probably because your body doesn't have like a, you know, a solution to the issue, right? So it just shuts down. And uh, I think that's what the best hitters do is they just see it and hit it because they have a good swing. But yeah. but you got to. You got to practice that. It's not as simple as saying that, right? So that's where it starts August 25th or whatever our first day of the fall is, mm -hmm. and, and, and setting up the machines at the at, at the top of the strike zone, and using ball flight as our coach. Did I, I did I explain that all right? Yeah, absolutely. No, it, and it's I think when you know your swing, you know how to approach pitchers' stuff, right? So when you know like 
especially like looking middle middle i th- i think that that's that's an unlock for a lot of kids especially uh, and even with two strikes because pitchers are going to miss right so you know it's it's one of those it's like you look certain sides of the plate then you're going to chase to certain sides of the plate you look in the middle then you may chase the edges but you're still swinging at strikes i think that that's that's very simple and i think it's profound and i think it's a it, you know it's a great idea you've had a lot of success with that and obviously i i'm you know uh, we we focus on the middle part of the plate too, so I love hearing that. Well, we we we'll have guys. We'll play a game, and we've beaten some really good arms over the last couple of years. And mm-hmm. coach, will, you know, coach would be like, "Wow, you had a really good game plan on him, and you really, you guys didn't chase his slider." And and what were you guys doing? And you know, I, I have no answer. I don't I don't want to be like I, I don't know what our guys were doing. They were just thinking about hitting the ball up the middle. You know, you know what I mean? Like, they're, it's amazing. Like people think they want to like have a definition. We want to uh, be able to, to, to put some thoughts behind something, but, but I can't, I don't know if we just kind of stay in the middle of the plate and mm-hmm. practice swing the middle of the plate. We're not chasing that two strike slider. Sure. Yep. I'm with you. So, uh, so let's get into the postseason a little bit. You guys have had success there as well. Do you guys change a whole lot or just kind of keep, you know, Pound on the stone, and then you, the success takes care of itself. It does. The only the only thing that we do we do do a lot of off days in the spring. Um, I'm a believer in off days, you know. So sometimes we'll take two days off a week, um, you know, and we'll have to tell our guys no hitting and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we want the bodies fresh. So so um, like last year, we won a regional. Uh, I think on Saturday, so we took Sunday and Monday off. I think we took, you know, we might have even taken Tuesday off, and mm-hmm. then and then practice for two days and went and play. Right, so I want the bodies fresh, if that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. And and but yeah, we're not changing anything approach wise. I mean, it's just, um, you know, we're just going to force somebody to throw it to the middle of the plate and 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 you know, try to hit strikes hard. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Oh, I love that. So let's get into uh, a little bit of you know some of some of your favorite things and the recruiting trail. So you know you guys you you're going out recruiting, and I coach high school kids, so I talk to these guys all the time about you know what people are looking for, and obviously tools are a big part of it. But you know you're going out on, on the recruiting trail. You've heard a kid was good. You know what are some different things that that you guys are looking for and tangibles, and then like what are you what are you specifically looking for in games? It's a great question. It's a great, I, I think our sport's got to be the hardest to evaluate players. I really do. I think that's why the portal's just nuts how it is, right? You have these early bloomers that look good in uniform, and then all of a sudden when they're not physically superior to the next guy, you know, they kind of fizzle out or, or you know, some people. I just think our sport's really hard to evaluate. I, I wish I could have like a great – like I'm, I wish I could have a great answer for you that – that you're like, wow, that guy really knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? But I, sure. I don't, I don't, you know, the big thing for us is like, do you have one skill set that we can plug and play immediately to help us win games? Division three, we don't have scholarships. So if it's like one skill set, like, you know, let's go. And then, you know, intangibles is obviously, you know, we, everybody says this, right? We want baseball players, not like, showcase ponies but like how how do you how do you evaluate that right if you're going to watch a kid that you don't know about so i I really rely on my friends to kind of send us guys because when you've coached a guy you know that right when you you go recruiting and you see a guy once or twice you're just guessing you know and 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 i don't think anybody's good enough to guess you know what i mean and and be right so um so we rely. I, I rely on a lot of connections, and but if if we don't have a connection, does he have one skill set that can help us win games? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm with you. So that's cool. So I've got um, I've got some different things that I wanted to ask you. Really, some quick hitters before you go, and just some stuff that we can take away from you. I know this time of year we're always trying to add tools to the toolbox. So uh, so the first one is what's a drill that your players love that we can steal from you. Oh, oh, that's a great question. Um, that's a great question. I, you know, uh, um, 
Uh, you know what? Every now and again, uh, we we do maybe once every other week. We'll play like uh, we'll do like a home run derby with but with softballs, right? And uh, like I think it's a great drill for our hitters. I love it. I love it. I think that like I think our guys get so movement illiterate. I, I, I say this to our players. I'll say this to some of our guys. Like, if we were to go play slow pitch softball and it was like you versus like a football player in the dorm, mm-hmm. who, who would be better? Right. And 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 the reality is, it's like obviously the baseball player should be way better, but like he's become so academy, you know what I mean? Like mechanical driven that all of a sudden he's like, oh my gosh, mm. like you kind of like. Oh, foot down, hands back. You know what I mean? Hand inside. Like, if I go get a linebacker in a football team, he's just going to swing as hard as he can. He's not thinking of those things. So now he's going to be rhythmic, right? So I think, like, I think it's a really good drill to help guys move better. I don't. Mm. Know. So, and of course, our guys love it because then they can talk trash. So, about who hits it farther. Oh, no doubt. I love that. So probably a little, pretty kind of, kind of an uncommon drill that I'm sure nobody else has talked about. Yeah, no, I haven't heard that one before. So you just set it up like BP. Are you throwing or are you guys flipping? Yeah, 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 let's rock. we got like five or six softballs. I mean, we don't have many softballs, but, yeah, let's rock, you know. And, I love uh, that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good one. Okay, second question is what is something that – or what's really the latest thing that you've learned that you feel like has made you better at your job? Ooh, ooh. great question. Great, great question. Um you know, um, and I think I think this might uh, um, yeah, I, I can go a, diff- a couple different directions with that. And uh, I I, um, I would say this 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 happened a couple of years ago, and this was probably the biggest impact you know we've had in our program is kind of going more to a strength based. Um, type of program right so you know i was like you know typical coach after a game like hey timmy we didn't do this well we got to do this better we got to do this better and and after our games you know we don't talk about those things anymore we just talk about what we did well and uh maybe maybe a little bit maybe a little bit of where we can get better but we wanted to like i'm a big believer you should get what you reward right going back to that culture comment right so 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 let's say we want to let's say we want to be great at stealing third base if a kid steals third base well we're really going to celebrate that victory right so um and and you know i've heard that before strength based and i really didn't understand what it meant but but what's incredible is how much freer our guys play rather than talking about the negatives right um, mm-hmm. and, and I always thought as a baseball guy, like you gotta, like I'm a coach, I gotta talk about the negatives. Uh, but, but, you know, talking about celebrating the, the win, celebrating the small wins along the way, I think has led to, you know, our, you know, obviously improved performance on the field, but it's also led to improved, you know, individual player development, if that makes sense. Instead of telling a kid always what he's doing wrong, hey, what are you doing right? You know, and how do we get more out of that? Mm-hmm. I love that. You said you could go a couple different directions. Did you have anything else that came to mind? Well, I was thinking more. I was thinking more about like a skill, you know, or or okay. something like that. Like I, I, I love watching. You talked about the barnstormers. I, I, I think I've watched almost. I've watched all the videos, right? The ABCA videos, the barnstormer videos. Like I'm, I, I love this, right? I'm a learner. I love trying to find. We all have human photocopy machines, right? Nobody's creating new stuff. So, like, can we take something somebody else is doing, either, either, maybe make it a different way or something along those lines? But uh, yeah. you know, we've 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 changed what we've done pitching. Why I was thinking more like as far as like pitching and, and movement and trying to create an environment out there. But um, what do you got on that? Well, we, you know, I, I'm a big, there, there's so many great pitching guys, you know, but I, I love Lance Wheeler's ride to slide. And, you know, how, how can we, you know, we throw a lot of medicine balls and 
how how can we get guys to move better without because what we found Jonathan is more you talk about hinge and you talk about getting in the rear hip mm -hmm. you take a guy that could hinge now all of a sudden he can't hinge right, right. so yeah. so so now you got to teach him how to oh boy how to you know hinge again mm -hmm. right so um more isn't better, right? So how how do we get guys to move uh, better? And and we do a lot of medicine ball stuff and sure. a lot of different exercises to try and mirror the slope and um, you know without trying to be mechanical. And and I think the last couple of years we got so so uh, so aggressive with hinge. All of a sudden, guys are kind of you know, more, more of the park benches, as Lance would talk about, and, and, and we're just not. And then we're missing arm side and we're pushing and, you know, not firming up the front side. So, okay. uh, yeah, so anyways, good. that was in the other direction I would have gone. No, that's good. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, the last one I've got for you is, it's kind of a big picture question, uh, but, but mainly, you know, we, especially I'm early, I'm year two, and then you've got a lot of coaches that are, you know, transitioning jobs or, you know, they're getting in their, their, their first head coaching job. So this one is more directed towards just, you know, the overall scope of the program. But, and it may have multiple answers too, which we've got plenty of time to discuss that if you've got it. But what's, what's one thing that you've implemented that you feel like has made the biggest impact on your program? Well, I would, I would say for sure, like the strength base, you know, I don't want to go back to that. That's, that's by far, you know, the strength base. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's, it's also led to like better relationships with our guys, if that makes sense. Um, so I would, I would, I would say the strength base and I, I kind of talked about that earlier. So that's, that's what I would say. I, I don't know. Am I punting the question saying that? No, I think that's a great answer. Well, the last one I got for you is, um, you know, we've got, uh, you've got, you know, we're 40 minutes in and I want to give you the opportunity if you if there's anything else you want to talk about or anything else that you want to leave our listeners with, anything that you want to hit on before we go. But I'm going to let you kind of open it up to you and, and just kind of see where it goes. But is there anything else along any of those lines that you want to discuss before we head out? No, I can't really think of anything. You know, I, I think, you know, we just the only thing, you know, I love the culture idea. I, I, I believe you know, I believe in culture. I believe in shaping the culture that you want. But, I, you know, I've just been blessed with so many unbelievable people who who are great coaches who've gone through our program. You know that, and and you know, while the head coach, when we win, gets a little bit more of the credit, um, the reality is, is I'm, I'm just fortunate to have, you know, some some incredible human beings that help help our program and uh, some of those guys have gone on and taken some really cool jobs and, and have done some really good things and they'll come in and they, they add their, their twist to the program and they take ownership. And, you know, some of the guys are, you know, 50 year, six year, you know, graduate students who, who just want to hang around and be a part of the program and make fun of each other. But, but, you know, we, we've, we've always had like six, six or seven coaches um, and, and, uh, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And, uh, you, you win with people and, you know, I'm, I think, you know, just those authentic relationships that we, that, that I have with, with some of these guys, it's a great, that we're friends, you know, and we're not coworkers, we're friends and we've got a great cast this year, uh, of coaches. So I'm excited uh, you know, it just makes it fun to come to work. But I, that's the biggest thing. Going back to that culture question, I would say is, you know, man, I, who you're with is, is is so important. Your assistant coaches are so important. You know, and I think, you know, you just, you know, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I, I just want to surround myself with as many good people as I can, and things will just work out. Thank you so much for listening to Ahead of the Curve. If you would do us a huge favor, leave a rating or review wherever you are listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone and tag us on social media. That would help us so much with growing the show and helping others to stay ahead of the curve.